Hey everyone, uh, thanks for sticking to the end. Uh, today's the last presentation. I'm going to tell you about Web3 social memberships. Let's monetize. Um, so what is Unlock Protocol? Uh, Unlock Protocol is a protocol for memberships. Memberships are basically anything that you can think of that gives you access to something. So your gym membership, maybe, if you go to gym pretty often, you have a card that lets you get in and then practice, do some exercise. It can be you know, a ticket to a conference. It's a membership for that conference. It's not recurring. It's just a one-off, but that's a membership. Your Netflix account or Spotify account, they are memberships. You're a member of Netflix, you're a member of Spotify, and you can listen to the music or watch the movies that they're showing. Uh, it is built, I mean, Unlock is built on blockchain because we think it brings a lot of interesting features for these membership interoperability, built-in payment mechanism, cross-platformness. The membership exists on a blockchain, which means it can be used in very different contexts. It was founded in 2018 by me, uh, and we have a, a cool team of people that have worked at Google, Facebook, GoDaddy, and a bunch of others. Obviously, completely open source. Uh, every single line of code that we've written in the last five years is on GitHub. I mean, some of it has been deleted, but if you go check the history, you'll find them. Um, and it's also community governed. Even though we created it, we actually don't have control over this anymore. Uh, we have a DAO, a governance token, and then people can vote uh, and decide what happens uh, to the protocol at any point. Uh, today, I'm going to tell you about the Web3 uh, social movement. Over the last few months, maybe a couple of years, we've seen emer the emergence of what people call Web3 social, so things like Lens, Farcaster, uh, but also other kind of apps uh, that have been very popular in the last few weeks. And uh, what's interesting is like one of the lessons that we can take from Web2 is if you're actually not paying for the product, you are the product. I mean, this is something that you've all seen at this point from you know, Facebook, Instagram, and others. Um, it is clear that they're selling our data, our attention to people that are uh, not necessarily have their best interest at heart. They're just you know, uh, companies that are trying to sell us product and things like that. Um, interestingly also, um, it wouldn't be too expensive to pay for this. I actually pulled these numbers yesterday, uh, but globally, uh, the yearly revenue that Facebook makes per user is less than $10. Uh, so imagine a world where everybody on earth who uses Google pays $10 a year. I know that's a lot for some countries and a, a lot less for some others. Uh, you would have the same experience without all of the ads, all of the spam. I actually recently started to get back into Facebook and Instagram. It's crazy the number of content that I actually don't care about. It's just ads, basically, at this point. Uh, and it's kind of wild to think that this massive machine yields milks about $10 on average per user. In the US, it's $50 a year. But in the rest of the world, it's less than $4, which is kind of wild. Um, two things we learned from blockchains. Obviously, we learned that economic incentives matter. When we pay for stuff, well, all of a sudden, the, 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 uh, the incentives are aligned between us, the consumer, and the provider of the service. If you're not paying for something, the incentives are completely misaligned in a way that can backfire very easily. Um, and also, we've learned that paying for infrastructure is actually how we guarantee independence, autonomy, and competition. When I say this, well, we all use blockchains. We pay for gas. Sometimes gas is expensive. That makes us upset. But that's how we know that this thing is really decentralized and actually that we are somehow in control of a little bit of, of what's happening there. Um, if somebody else was paying for this, they would be the one deciding when they submit the transaction or if they submit the transaction at all. Interestingly, also, in the last year and some, uh, I mean, a couple of years, but then um, even more in the last year, we've seen that Web2 is also starting to think about charging users. And I know this is also a controversial topic, but if you think about Medium, Substack, Patreon, this has been the case for the last, you know, uh, five, six years. Uh, but also YouTube. Um, I have Medium twice here, and more recently, last year, I think, uh, when, uh, or actually this year, it's all a blur at this point, when Mr. Musk decided to uh, acquire uh, Twitter and try to charge for X, it's obviously uh, an interesting decision from this guy, but I think there's some interesting realization behind it that in the end, the consumers, the users of the app should be the ones supporting this. Uh, Farcaster actually just moved into a model where people pay uh, about $10 a year uh, to use the app, and I think that's a fair, interesting idea to explore here. Um, the challenge, though, when Web2 does this, is that it, they still provide censorship and creates even more lock-in. If I'm a, a creator on YouTube and I've got a thousand million subscribers that are each paying a month, uh, uh, some, some amount uh, on a monthly basis, well, that means that I cannot go push, push my content on Twitch or some other video platform, because I would lose all of my subscribers. When these platforms create these memberships on their site, they're creating more lock-in. They're actually locking me in as a creator and my subscribers on that platform. The idea here also is that when we use a Web3 
system for this, you can actually move from platform to platform and your members, your subscribers will basically be able to follow you or access, not even follow you, but access your content on different platforms. And one of the challenges also when Web2 does it is obviously the fees. I put from 10 to 50%, 50% is most for the adult stuff, but it's also kind of outrageous to imagine that people that are doing adult content are paying half of their revenue to platforms that are actually definitely not providing uh, that much value. So let's actually build it the Web3 way. Uh, a demo of a blog that I've created um, using Versal uh, and, and Next.js. So it's a very simple blog on which I wrote a bunch of articles. I actually didn't write them. Uh, ChatGPT did and did beautiful images. Uh, a bunch of articles about Web3 and crypto and Istanbul and Linea. Uh, it's not completely crap. It's actually surprisingly good. Um, at this point, this blog post is like uh, this blog is like any other blog. You can go from you know page to page, and you can read all of the content. And what I wanted to show you here is obviously this is I fully own the content, fully own the platform here. Uh, but I wanted to show you that I can actually easily build a Substack-like experience and really easily build a Substack-like experience with that without having to go and delegate to a platform. So let's actually go uh, look at uh, first the first step to do. I'm going to use the Unlock dashboard, uh, which is a front-end application that we built to deploy a smart contract, a membership contract. I'm going to do it on Linear here. Uh, so it's going to be uh, my blog, membership. Uh, the subscription, the, the memberships are going to be valid for, you know, let's say three days. Uh, I'm going to sell an unlimited amount of them, and I'm going to charge uh, 0.01 ETH. Uh, somebody would do the math uh, for these. And I'm actually deploying the contract right now. So MetaMask is going to pop up. So I'm deploying the contract here. And as I'm deploying the contract, you have to know this is my contract, me as a creator here, me as Unlock. I fully own it. Nobody else has control over this. It's deployed on the linear chain. We support also other network that I'm not going to mention here for obvious reasons. Uh, and uh, once it's my contract, I can do a bunch of things with it. Uh, I can, for example, airdrop memberships to people that I love that I don't want that I don't need to, that I don't, I'm not going to ask them to pay. I can do, for example, discount codes as well on chain. I can do uh, stuff like, uh, you know, um, uh, free trials and uh, cancellation terms if I want to allow people to cancel or transfer uh, these memberships. Uh, let's give it another second for this to be mined. I think it's pretty happened, but the RPC endpoint is slow to propagate this. Um, and what I'm waiting for this to be mined because I want to have the smart contract address. And then I'm going to plug that smart contract address into my blog. Yay, here we have it. So uh, that's, uh, yay, it was done. I can go start managing it. At this point, obviously, there is not going to be any members. So that's the dashboard through which I can see all the people that have a membership. Bring the internet here. Uh, and I'm just going to copy the address here. And what I'm going to do now is actually go to my blogs code. Uh, and um, I will show you a, a little bit of uh, what uh, the code has. But it has basically one new component called token gates. And for people getting read code here, that component actually does three things. It checks whether the user is authenticated. If they are not, we're going to prompt them to connect their wallet to authenticate. We'll do that in a second. Once we know the user's address, we'll check whether they have one of these NFTs from that contract pretty simple RPC call. And then if they don't, we show them a checkout link through which they can go purchase one of these membership. And if they do have the NFT, well, we just show the content. That's that simple. There is really not that much. And I'm just going to do uh, find the config file. Uh, here, I'm going to replace the lock is the name of the contract. So replace that address with the one that I just deployed here. And I'm also going to take the chain ID from uh, Linea, and I'm going to put that into that configuration. And I'm going to save this now. And I'm just going to do, uh, so git commit using a linear contract. And I'm just going to push this. We'll have to hope for the network uh, gods here. Uh, maybe this is too small. Can uh, zoom in a little bit, but we're, I'm pushing this. Yay, cool. Okay, so it's going to go to GitHub, and now we're going to have to wait uh, for a few seconds to go to Versal. Actually, whoop, where is GitHub? Here. Uh, so interestingly, I've got a pull request that I've already pre built so you can see the changes. We're going to go to Versal, and we'll see that version of the blog basically with now the membership uh, built in. So we'll see here. So local version will, as, as Versal is building, but you'll see that now the blog is token gated. So now to sign in, I first need to, to sign in. To view the content, I first need to sign in, uh, which I'm going to click on this button. And at that point, I already connected my wallet, so MetaMask didn't pop again. But I don't have an NFT yet, so I'm going to pop uh, the checkout flow. 
which is happening here. Uh, MetaMask is going to ask me to sign uh, to authenticate here. I'm just going to, yes, buy one of these memberships. Uh, I'm going to get here. Continue. I'm going to pay with my balance of ETH on this network. So I'm paying myself for my own block, but you get the point. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and click yes, confirm. And as soon as this is mine, you will see that the content underneath will refresh and I'll be able to see the full blog post because now I have one of these NFTs. Does it make sense? Let's actually go check if it's now built on here. Yes, so I can sign in again, same flow. And what's interesting is I actually don't have to build to buy the, I mean, I have the NFT now, so I can see the full content. We can find more information about Unlock on the Unlock website, unlock-protocol.com. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter or some other social network uh, that you fancy. And you should definitely follow us on GitHub, uh, where we post a bunch of code samples and examples like that one uh, for people to easily add memberships to their own social web applications. Is there any question? Yes, go ahead. Uh, can this be integrated with uh, proof of humanity uh infrastructure for uh, trial version or something? Absolutely. Like so we have a system of hooks on the smart contract that you can use to trigger other things on chain and verify other things. So you can make the purchase succeed only if the user has a proof of humanity NFT, for example, and then let them cancel if they have indeed uh, a proof of humanity NFT. A second question, sorry. Uh, uh, is it possible to withdraw a membership and get the uh, remaining... Uh, yes, fee. so by default, memberships are cancelable. As a lock manager, as the manager of the contract, I can decide whether I want to allow people to cancel or not. By default, we allow people to cancel. Um, and when they cancel, they get a prorated refund based on you know, the duration of the contract. So but see if I say 30 days and I cancel halfway after 15 days, I will get half of the monthly subscription fee back. Thank you. Thanks, sense. But that's all customizable by the manager of the contract. They can decide to allow refunds, not allow refunds, allow transfer, not allow transfer, etc. Any other question? So obviously blogs is a use case. Are there other use cases that you are thinking, have in mind, or you're already starting to onboard companies that are, are using this? Yeah, so ticketing is one of the biggest use cases right now for, for this. A lot of people are using this to organize conferences and selling tickets as this. On the social web, uh, we're seeing some traction a lot on uh, what you called DeFi protected telegram groups, basically. So a group of investors that are shilling tokens to one another, I guess, uh, and they are selling these memberships. So that's one of the things that we're seeing most traction on. Uh, we're seeing a bunch of uh, proof of attendance mechanism as well. So yeah, you were somewhere and you get a, a stamp. Um, we're, we have a bunch of interesting people that are looking at stuff like video streaming. So you could basically token gates, like you can watch half the stream and then you pay for the rest. I would love to see some people build podcasting application that would be using this uh, in a decentralized way. So you don't have to be stuck on Spotify or some of the other platforms for that. Cool, thanks. Of course. And you had another question? Um, <clears throat> for the payment, is it you pay up front or do you have like super fluid integration? Or so awesome? there is a super fluid integration, but more than that, you pay up front, but you pay just for the duration. So let's say you have a monthly subscription, you pay just one month, but you've, you might have approved the contract to withdraw from your balance every month. So basically you don't have to pay for the full year or the 20 years ahead of time. You just pay just to make sure that at the beginning of every month you have the $10, 10 USDC or 10 DAI or whatever that is on your wallet. And at that point, your subscription is automatically renewed every month. Very nice. So that works pretty much like your credit card would work. Like in practice, if you're subscribed to Netflix today, you don't pay 20 years of Netflix. You just make sure that every month you have, you know, 12 bucks or something. More questions? Oh, somebody else. Uh, uh, yeah, another one. Uh, I'm not a developer. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and uh, so one of the questions that I have is, I know that there's, you know, WordPress and Magenta and Spotify, er, Spotify, uh, Shopify, and, and all of these sort of WYSIWYG things. Yeah. Are you integrated, are, are you building widgets for these kind yes. of things? So the non... So you mentioned WordPress first. We actually have a pretty popular WordPress plugin um, that actually allows you to do what I just showed on the WordPress blog. Uh, Shopify has a lot of limitation in terms of what you can do with their plugins, but in theory that is possible. And I know they're, last year they worked on some Web3 stuff, moved to AI at this point, I guess, but uh, hopefully they'll be back at some point. Uh, other CMSs, uh, I think somebody built a Drupal integration uh, with Unlock uh, a while back. Um, you know. It's possible to build these things. Uh, we're hoping the community builds some. We can build some as well ourselves. Cool, thanks. Of course. Oh, somebody has a question over there. 
You mentioned about month-to-month uh, -month, uh, subscription, right? So supposing somebody doesn't have the 10 USDC or 10 DAI in their wallet, does the service automatically terminate, or is there these, do these services integrate into your smart contract to terminate? No, they automatically terminate. So the, 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 I don't know if you're a dev, but the application itself will just query the, the contract at any point to check whether the, the user has a subscription valid. They can cache that for like a day or two, but like in practice, they would query every time the user comes back, the, the, the app would query the contract to, hey, is the user subscription valid? And if the answer is yes, they can see the content. If the answer is no, they will not see the content. OK, so all the subscription information is stored in the contract. Stored on chain on the contract, on absolutely contract. Right. OK, and uh, the application has to query it on a regular basis. Yes, and the more regularly they do, the more accurate they are. The least regularly they do, the you know they're risking losing a year or two. If they only query every two days, they will risk somebody just canceling and then having two days of free access until the app checks again. Is there any plans for the contract itself to push out events saying this particular so account doesn't have it? We actually have webhooks already okay. integration, so you could know it, but that's a, an extra integration that your app would need to make to make sure that it listens to these webhooks. Okay, thank Makes you. Makes sense? And actually, I see you have a graph t-shirt. We have subgraphs, and we're actually using these subgraphs to, uh, to, build, uh, to build these kind of notification system. And there is a question here. Oh, yes. Quick question. Um, how do you find the uh, unlock protocol? What is your business model? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a bunch of things that one thing I didn't show is we have built a credit card gateway. So many users might not have crypto wallets. On my blog, there's actually a membership. And right now, it's about a third of users have paid with credit card. When they pay with credit card, we actually charge an extra fee on top of the subscription fee. So I'm charging you know, five uh, USDC on Polygon on my blog for a year. Uh, technically, if people pay with card, they pay $6. Uh, and so there's $1 that gets split between us and Stripe. We also have an interesting governance model. I mentioned the governance token at this point. Uh, and we think that eventually, uh, there might be a fee that uh, the protocol might take for providing that service uh, here. For renewing subscription, uh, we have a system of referrals so, and gas refunds. So basically, a mechanism to say, if I am the one, uh, I'm, so if I'm an application that actually purchases a membership on behalf of my users, I get a cut of what they, of the allow. This is all built at the protocol level. And so these are all things that can be used to monetize applications built on top of the protocol. Thank you. Of course. Question, are you also integrating uh, like uh, notification? Oh, that's me. Uh, sure. like notification, like XCTP, like these kind of things? Like so when you do unlock is smart contract, so you can easily plug you know, any kind of system on top of this. We have not built anything yet with XMTP, but that's definitely something that we're thinking about. But that wouldn't be protocol layer, right? That would be on top of the protocol because it's, yeah. And are you fixed to the number of currencies or can you use any currency? Actually, you can use any ERC20 token on any of the network that we're on. And we even have cross-chain purchase. So let's say my blog actually is on Polygon. You might have a Polygon wallet. But uh, let's say you don't have a Polygon wallet and you have Linear tokens. You'd be able to pay Linear tokens on Linear and then get the NFT on Polygon. Uh, without having to bridge or switch anything in your wallet. We're just abstracting away both the currency to show you what you have in your wallet to allow you to pay with that, and the chain so you can pay wherever you are and get the NFT on the thing that the creator uh, is using. There's a little delay because we're using bridges and bridges have uh, delay, but you know, uh, the last test that I've done was like sub one, less than one minute to actually get the NFT in a cross-chain manner, which is still pretty convenient. Cool. I think you I think, I don't know how many questions there were happened, but, and a lot of spicy questions, but I think you get definitely the award of uh, answering as many questions as possible. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Julian. Big round of applause.